Hey everybody, John Stevenson here. It's been a while, hope you're doing well. Over the past year, I-5 has grown substantially, and if you've been with us for the past little bit of time, hopefully we've taught you at least one thing. The US Space Force is not a joke. Steve Crow made that a little bit hard at first, but we've moved past that. The Space Force was established back in 2019, but the United States has been working on space capabilities to improve our national security for the past 60 years. We rely on space systems for so many different things. Communication, early warning systems, LASIK surgeries, like freaking baby formula. A lot of random stuff that I was honestly surprised to learn about. Point being, we need space. I mean, I don't think anybody can really debate that, but we also need the Space Force. The world needs the Space Force, but not just tomorrow's world, but today's. Space is there, and we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. For the past couple of years, space is finally being looked at as a priority. The Air Force, Army, and Navy have had their own space components for quite some time, but the organizing and the organizing, training, and equipping part of the Space Force mission really shows that the Space Force is looking to bring space-minded military members under the same Space Corps, finally paving the path for Air Force Chief of Staff Ron Fogelman's vision of a transition from an Air Force to an Air and Space Force, ultimately towards a Space and Air Force. The goal of the Space Force is to build a unified and stable military service focused on its respective domain, similar to how all the other military services have each of their own respective domains, air, land, and sea. Essentially, the Space Force now makes space a primary domain and not just a secondary domain. Now, we initially had the U.S. Space Command, which is what our national security decided to initially organize space as, which was similar to that of the Special Operations Command model. However, this was not a good substitute for a space force, as the job of a combatant command is to employ forces, but not necessarily to organize, train, and equip forces. Guardians deliver capabilities like no other branch, and as General Saltzman has recently stated, the Space Force mission doesn't fully describe everything the Space Force actually does. Guardians operate our most advanced technology to deter aggression, and without them, missiles wouldn't be located and your GPS wouldn't be working anymore. But also, we wouldn't be seeing any plans to be going back to the moon or Mars simply because those things require Space Force. The Space Force not only has military responsibilities, but also commercial NASA mission responsibilities. And yes, NASA is different from the Space Force. I talked a little bit about that in the previous season. I gotta, I gotta cover, our, I gotta cover our secret space tube here. It does, uh, does secret space things. For example, the Space Force is involved in the Artemis program by ensuring spaceflight safety and assisting the astronauts return to Earth when it's time to come home. We need a Space Force today to literally save the universe. Everything we do revolves around space, and so does our overall advancement. At some point in the future, if NASA or a commercial industry like SpaceX have some sort of space base on the moon, the Space Force would definitely be nearby to protect the people and hardware. In order to save the world, we need to be focused on our big problems. Often, big events sidetrack us and replace our previous big problems, for example, the 9-11 attacks and further acts of terrorism leading to subsequent budget cuts 
for NASA and space exploration, or general losses in confidence in space operations after the Columbia and Challenger space disasters, which ultimately shut down the space shuttle program. We had the ability to go to the moon in the 60s, and we're finally we're learning it now with the Artemis program. And it's apparent many countries, both our allies and adversaries, would love to make shop on the moon. The Space Force will be the first present whenever we go outside of our planet, and it's up to the Space Force to be malleable to adjust to whatever potential challenges we may see in this final frontier that we haven't even thought of yet. But I get it, a, a lot of this stuff seems way far in the future. But it's really up to us on how much we wanna see the space domain grow and how willing we are to take advantage of space domain opportunities full force. Future conflicts will always arise and with our best robots ever being created being in space, that being satellites, it is 100% guaranteed that every single fight, both present and future, will be involving guardians and artificial intelligence working together, designing these satellites in order to help us win our wars and make sure we can still navigate to the nearest McDonald's. The future of the universe depends on the Space Force and every guardian today is not only living in the present, but also is designing the future.